Do you ever wonder why you can't lose those dreaded extra pounds or grow your bank account or find a relationship that lasts or, or find a marketing message that sticks? We know in so many ways those things are similar and they're not your fault. Not at all. Your mind type governs how you act. And if you don't master your mind type, you will never be in charge and you will never communicate properly. Now, my friend and mentor, Ridgely Goldsboro, uh, took me through this process of finding my mind type. It was seriously, absolutely amazing. And we recorded it for this podcast. Now, I kind of get a little choked up when I think about this. Like, I really did not expect something as profound as what Ridgely shared with me. Maybe you'll have the same reaction. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy Podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. So this episode is unlike any other episode I've ever done on this show. This is the 343rd episode, I believe. It is by far the most unique I asked my friend and mentor, Ridgely Goldsboro, to come on and share a little bit about what he calls mind types. And so I thought this was going to be an interview, and I do interview him a little bit, but right before we recorded, he threw out this idea. He asked if he could find my mind type live, live as we're recording. Like this podcast is completely unedited. I was like, that is a really cool idea and also utterly terrifying, but ended up being really insightful, absolutely amazing So you are going to love this quote unquote interview here. Now, before we jump into my talk with Ridgely, I first want to give a quick listener shout out to PT Peers, who left a five star rating review, said, I listened to your last episode of last year again on Easter Sunday, thought it would be a good way to freshen up during this pandemic. That's really cool going back and listening to that. That's awesome. Uh, Always look forward to your content with or without guests, especially appreciate the fact that you give actionable content. Thank you. So like PT Peers, if you, uh, if you want to leave a rating and review, we would highly covet those, re- those ratings and review. Not only do they help us to uh, improve the ratings of the show so more people can get this message, uh, it's a great way for me to know more about what you're thinking. Like I-, I never knew anybody would go back and listen to that. Like that's crazy to me. I don't even know what episode that is. I got to go look now and like what episode is the last episode of last year? Uh, in fact, I'm going to go look that up and then come back here. Because maybe you need to go back and listen to that too. I mean, clearly if it was good enough for uh, for him or her, it might be good enough for you. So I'm going to cut away and go look up that episode and see what the heck it was actually. All right, so it makes a lot of sense. That episode, uh, the last one of last year was uh, uh, my 2020 affiliate marketing predictions. My affiliate uh, marketing predictions for 2020. Now, of course, I I never predicted or knew that we were going to have a pandemic and so things have changed, but I'll bet a lot of those are spot on still. In fact, probably more so, probably things that I thought were going to take, you know, three quarters of the year or the whole year to take place are happening faster. Now, before we get too deep into my talk with Ridgely, make sure you go out, check out a special page he built for you at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash mind types. MattMcWilliams.com forward slash mind types. There's also a surprise right on that page where originally shows you how to discover your mind type through a short quiz just like I did. Now, not only is this super powerful, it's completely free. So go check that out. Uh, MattMcWilliams.com forward slash mind types. Now, just because you know what your mind type is, uh, though, doesn't mean that you know how to use it to your advantage. I'm still working through that process myself. So right after the quiz, Check out the free training that Ridgely has. It shows you how to use your mind type to express your authentic self and ultimately to grow your business, make more sales. Again, you can check that out at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash mind types. With that, let's cut to my interview where we're going to learn about marketing according to brain science with Ridgely Goldsboro. Ridgely, my friend, my my mentor in a way, uh, welcome. Well, thanks, man. I did not plan that both of us would be wearing a red shirt. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, really? I thought I thought that was like in the Google Calendar invite. Did we not, did we not discuss that? Oh. Um, so, man, I, I'm so excited to have you. I, I had you on my old podcast many, 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 many moons ago. 
Uh, and I was sharing with you before we went live, it actually was the third most downloaded episode of that podcast behind only Ray Edwards and Michael Hyatt, which is saying something right there. Yeah, thank you. And, um, you. and that was, it was like, it was my, it was actually personally my favorite episode because of something we did on that and we were discussing before. And we're going to do a little something similar. So I'm just going to tell you guys, I have a feeling this might end up being like my favorite episode. Uh, it might remain so for years to come. So we'll see. We'll see. No pressure. No pressure. Um, so yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> here we are. Uh, you're at home. I'm at home. We were just having a conversation about hair. Let's be honest. Before this pandemic thing, when when like how often did two men get together on Zoom and talk about their hair? Was that like a common thing? I think like never. <laughs> like that would be very strange. Okay, just say it. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's like a common thing now. I've had like multiple conversations with people like, "Oh my gosh, my hair," and it was just terrible. I finally got it cut. I had I had a text from a friend of mine the other day, and all he wrote was, "I'm getting my hair cut today!" Exclamation! 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 <laughs> and like I knew what he meant. Like I knew how. Like normally that would just be the weirdest thing if this friend. Of mine <laughs> No, for sure, man. You know what? And it, it is what it is. And yeah. Things are changing. And, and you know what, Matt? I don't honestly think we're ever going back to what it used to be. Don't know exactly. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't forecast into the future. All I can say is we need to reinvent ourselves and we need to pay attention because times, they are a change. Yep. And I think we have an opportunity today. You're doing some really cool stuff. like. Um, I mean, you, you've helped, you and I go back a while, like we talked about with the podcast, and um, it was kind of funny. Like, I'll just let people know when, when Ridgely and I connected, it was on the, like this completely different level. In that, you know, he had the, what was the name of the book? The Why Engine was it the yeah. name of it? Okay, he had this book called The Why Engine. That episode doesn't exist anywhere. I think maybe you can find it on my website. Um, but he, yep, he's going to show the book there. Yeah, <laughs> and this was a hundred and ninety-five dollar book, wasn't it? Yes, worth a thousand times more than that. But, uh, so this is not like a book you would just find on Amazon back in the day. Anyway, so we connected through that and then fast forward, like, I don't know, two years and you and I are chatting for who knows what. And, and we discovered that like, you're kind of in the product launch world and you know, this world, like this marketing world, what? So you're going to have a conversation about that. We connect you. I quote you all the time. Um, with this quote here. People buy because the act of buying makes them feel good about themselves. I don't know if you remember saying that, but mm -hmm. so then fast forward like a couple years later, we're at the same conference. You come up, you know, we give each other a big hug back when, you know, you could do that. <laughs> and then long story short, you then write a book about, you know, JV programs with Glenn Ledwell. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, dude, like I had no idea that you were in that world. You yeah. Know? So it's just really cool. I just want to let people know a little bit about you. But now you're doing something even probably I think it's like your coolest thing yet. Um, and it's about this concept of mind types. And so we're going to talk about that today, guys. Um, so I'm going to answer the, the obvious question or ask the obvious question. What the heck is a mind type? So, you know, Matt, since we've known each other, I'm not sure what book I was on at that point, but I've written 17 so far and five of them are on brain biology the biology of the mind, and emotional intelligence. And my feeling is you have to really know yourself if, A, you have to know yourself to be a great human being. But if you want to be a great business person, you really have to know, not only know yourself, but you have to be able to express who you are to the market. Because the market doesn't care about what you do. Somebody else does what you do. The market cares about who are you. Who are you? What do you stand for? What do you rest represent? What do you believe? Why do you do what you do? Not what you do. because Somebody else does that too. So your mind type is the physical manifestation of your belief system. Nobody does anything without a belief. You don't get out of bed in the morning unless you believe that it's better than staying under the covers. You don't eat unless you believe it's going to take away your hunger. You certainly don't work if you don't believe you're going to be rewarded. Every single thing we do is driven by a belief system. And the aggregate belief system that each of us has causes a mind type. It causes your mind to be a particular way. And there are seven different mind types. One of my challenges to myself was this. 
I love all of these things that help us put more arrows in our quiver and become more effective. So whether it's Myers-Briggs, Strength Finders, Predictive Index, DISC, the Enneagram, any of them, I think they're all great tools to get to know you better, and especially if you figure out what you can do with all that. But my challenge to myself was, I want to create a program that is so clear, so simple, and accessible that it never requires an interpreter or a coach or someone to tell you what that thing means. Hmm. In other words, it's explained, you get it, you go, wow, that's right, this is what I can do with it, and then you can express who you are more clearly so that by doing that, you attract great clients that believe what you believe and you reject all the ones that don't resonate with you. And you and I both know, brother, that not all clients are created equal. And we don't want the bad ones. You just don't. They make your life miserable. You want only people who resonate with you. And if you had the ability to express you to the world, clearly, you would get that. Okay, so the mind type affects, I'm going to say this and you can correct me if I'm wrong. The mind type affects not only like me knowing my mind type affects how I communicate best with you know, people that I want to market to, people that I want to persuade, uh, but it also affects how, um, like me knowing your mind type will affect how I communicate with you, correct? 100%, man. Just okay. imagine this. So if I say, Frank, you don't react. If I say, John, you don't react. But if I say, Matt, you react immediately. There are mind type keywords per mind type that are as powerful as using your name. So if I happen to know what your mind type is, then I can literally have ninja powers of influence over you that you don't even know that I have. You don't even know that I'm doing it to you when I speak to you using your mind type keywords. And yet you're, you, you find yourself doing this. Your, your chest, every time I use one, your chest comes up a little bit, then it comes up a little bit more, comes up a little bit more. And then I ask you for a favor and you say, well, yes, I can do that. And without even knowing it, you're agreeing to whatever the request was because the keywords are so powerful. Okay. So then I'm a little scared to do this because <laughs> I don't know if I want to give you those ninja powers, but what the heck. So I think one of the best ways that we can do this is to, um, I, you know, if you remember, we were talking about this before we went, went live. Uh, in that old podcast episode way back when, you helped me discover my why. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to this day, I, I remember like the questions you asked me, I remember exactly what I said. I remember, I remember my why and I'm cognizant of that. And it has influenced me pretty much every single day, especially professionally. Um, I mean, since then, uh, in fact, I, I would dare say that discovering my why, you know, and then there's, there's a dark side to your why and there's a, there's a bright side to your why. I, I've been more focused on that dark side, actually, because I realized how it was crippling me. So mm -hmm. I just want to say that, um, you know, that this was pretty cool what we did back then. And you walked me through. You walked me through mm -hmm. discovering that why. So we're going to do that now with me. You're going to help me discover my mind type. I'm going to give you those ninja powers. Uh, <laughs> so I just, I don't know, should I just go ahead and write like a blank check to you for everything you're going to sell me over the next few years? <laughs> 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 no, but um, let's do that. So I'm going to let you lead the way, and and we'll, cool. we'll do that. And you guys can uh, those you know those of you listening, you can you can see how this works uh, just on me. You'll so basically you're going to find out one of the seven mind types now, right? And then we're going to share a way where you can get the other six and learn more about you know all seven and how to use these in your marketing and and your messaging and all that fun stuff here in a little bit. Exactly right. All right, Matt. So I'm going to ask you to tell me a couple of stories. Sure. And it may only take one story, but probably two. Okay. One will be a story related to work and one non-related to work. And what you're going to find is that I'm going to raise the bar on myself ahead of time because I don't know what you're going to tell me and tell everybody that's listening that basically Matt is in all likelihood going to tell us the same story twice because biology always works. When you're freezing, you want to warm up. When you're starving, you want to eat. And what we're talking about is the biology of the brain. So by using, tapping into brain biology, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into your limbic brain space, the feeling brain. All decisions happen based on a feeling and then are justified with thought or logic. And therefore, anybody that wants to have powers of persuasion must create limbic messaging 
that speaks to the feeling or decision-making part of the brain. So here's the first story. Tell me a story about something that happened to you work-related with another person, a specific interaction that you had with somebody that made you feel successful or great. It made me feel successful or great. Great. Yeah. With another person. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I, the one that comes to mind is uh, so we, uh, th- there's a team member that we were, we, there were some communication issues and um, I had basically arrived at, you know, the point where I said this, this, re- you know, this relationship, this business relationship needs to end. You know, we need to, uh, for lack of a better term, we're gonna have to terminate this person. And, uh, and I mean, it stressed me out for like, about well, three days. Like, I mean, literally I was, mm-hmm. I was sick to my stomach. Um, I wasn't sleeping that great. Uh, I would imagine my cortisol levels were virtually an all time high, you know? Um, <laughs> and you could tell cause I gained like three pounds in three days, you know? And it was, it was just really stressful. But I, I texted a friend of mine. I was like, you know, cause he's, he's a guy, he's a great business leader, you know? And, uh, and I just said, man, I said, can we talk? And he said, absolutely. So we talked and he said, okay, first of all, don't just call him up and terminate him. He said, you need to, you need to have a conversation with him. He said, you need to call him up. And the first words out of your mouth need to be, um, listen, uh, I scheduled this call with the intention of telling you that we were going to terminate you. You need to like wake him up out of his, you know, his slumber because his performance has not been very good for the last few days, you know, or for the last few weeks actually. And, um, that makes me sound like a bad person. Let me put, for the last few months is probably more accurate. You know, you need to just like startle. He said, there could be something going on. And so I had this conversation was one of the toughest conversations I've ever had in my life because this person, uh, you know, he's, he's also a friend, you know, he's become a friend. And so, you know, I called him up and we had this conversation and by the going through this process that, you know, my friend, my one friend gave me, basically kind of gave me the script to have this conversation. Uh, I learned that there were some things going on. You know, mm-hmm. There were some things that uh, were distracting and I was able to say, Hey, you know, when that kind of stuff happens, like you need to come to me and, and tell me, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he wasn't, his performance wasn't suffering because he didn't care. His performance wasn't suffering because he, you know, he just sucks at his job. His performance was suffering because he had stuff going on. Mm-hmm. And, and I just like that, that feeling, I think sometimes when you go into like that very stressful situation, mm-hmm. you come mm-hmm. out of it on the other side, it's like that, you know, I mean, and I, I felt great and, and things have been great since then. It allowed us to have a conversation that needed to happen. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love it. I mean, so that was, I mean, I, I felt super successful and super uh, awesome after actually, you know, having that conversation, doing something that was really hard and coming out on the other side. For sure. What about it made you feel super successful? Two things. Number one, I really didn't want to have it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I kind of just wanted, like there were two things that were easy that I could have done, which is nothing and just fire them. Mm-hmm. And instead I did the really hard thing, mm-hmm. which was have this conversation and it, it was, it was really, it was a heart to heart and I'm not really good at those, right? Uh, especially with like male friends, you know, mm-hmm. um, actually, no, I'm just not good at those period. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not kind of my, that's not my jam. Um, and secondly, I mean, the result was I got a team member who realized, okay, things aren't right. Uh, he can come to me. And in fact, uh, about three hours before we went live uh, with this interview, um, He actually texted me and said, hey, heads up, got some stuff going on. You know, some bad stuff happened today. Uh, Personally, I don't know if I'm going to be available today. I just want to let you know. I remember going, awesome. Thank you. Right. Rather than just going like six hours without hearing from you. Now I know. Uh, Then he texted me about 20 minutes ago, said, okay, everything's good. I'm working a normal schedule today, you know, just want to let you know that too. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yes, that's like, but on that other side, like when it first happened, I was just relieved because I didn't want to lose them. Uh, but also I was relieved that I had done something challenging for me. And uh, yeah. I'm not well, really good that important that, to you? So. Well, why was that important to you to do something challenging like that and also have that result? Uh, I mean, number one, it, this business is my baby. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's it's my business. I mean, my wife and I are, are partners, and so I take everything you know, like any. I mean, you know this, like any entrepreneur, you take everything personally. 
Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. when, when you perform bad and I'm a team member, like, why are you screwing me over? You know, like I'll right. admit it. I mean, that's how I feel. Right. You, you, you didn't do that task right. because you wanted to screw me over. Right. You know, like right. that's how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I've worked for other people, well, I should say the one time I worked for anybody else. No, no, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't go down a rabbit hole. No, I didn't feel that way. Okay. You know, but I feel that way with my business. So, um, why did I feel, why did, what was why was this idea? important to you? Yeah, it, it was important because, um, I really want him to stay mm-hmm. and he can do great work. Um, and I, uh, I feel like we need him, but we need him at his highest level. And we get that with him, you know, staying on board and it's my baby. So I want it to do well. Perfect. Okay. Forget about work. Okay. Tell me a second story. This time it's got to be outside work. So it could be friends, family, relationships, your health, a hobby, an adventure, something fun that you did. Again, those same situation, a specific interaction with another individual outside work that made you feel successful or great. Um, our son was throwing a really big fit the other day. <laughs> yeah. Again, quarantine life. <laughs> and, um, I don't even remember how I got him to just completely like how I diffused the situation in like 15 seconds, but I did. I, I couldn't even tell you what I, I don't remember. I wish I did. I should have re- like recorded it and written it down. I could write a parenting book apparently, but um yeah he was throwing a massive fit and in 15 to 20 seconds i got him to calm down nice guys to my wife for you know how he behaved and life went on nice and what about that made you feel successful um you know i mean for one um i didn't have to listen to a screaming child um <laughs> uh, two i knew that it had been a particularly hard morning um, an early afternoon for my wife, you know, she homeschools our kids. So she mm-hmm. has to deal with, like, I don't deal with that stuff more than once every couple of weeks, you know, mm-hmm. uh, she deals with it every day, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes for long periods of time. And I knew she was frustrated. I just knew that like diffusing that situation, I could tell in her just made her go. <sighs> nice. You know, I didn't have like, okay. And why was that important to you? Oh, for one, I love her. Mm-hmm. Um, two, I love him. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't, I mean, I know, I know how it is when you're really upset for 20 or 30 minutes throwing a fit and then you feel like crap afterwards. So I didn't want him to feel like crap. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted them to be able to go about their day and get back to, you know, stuff that they're supposed to be doing. Um, and Sounds an awful lot like the team member that you had the tough yeah. conversation with. Also, it <laughs> felt really good. Like, mm-hmm. I remember going, I got to be honest. In that moment, I was like, I'm the best dad ever. <laughs> like for just a minute, I was like, oh my God. But actually really what I was thinking is that was really good. Oh my gosh, it actually worked. Like what I did actually worked to communicate with a four-year-old, which is really hard. I was like. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now you realize you just told me the exact same story twice. In a way, yeah. <laughs> right. Told you you would. I mean, that's amazing, man. Biology is incredibly powerful. Now, is it more important to you to touch people any way you can, like have an impact on them any way you can, or to first establish some kind of a bond or relationship with them and through that bond, you connect with them. Oh, it's bond and relationship. That's our whole, that's my whole business, yeah. Yeah, and somebody violates your trust. Do you find it to be annoying or like a sucker punch in the stomach? Sucker punch for a little bit. I'm actually, I I forgive people very easily though. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. So you feel successful when you build relationships that are based in trust? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 100%, right? Yep. Yeah. That's because you, my brother, are the connector. Oh. The connector is the person who, for whom trust is everything. Yeah. Your superpower is building trust. Your business is all about trust. Mm-hmm. That everything you do is about building trust. And when you're in a trusting environment and a trustworthy place then you shine more than anywhere else for sure. And when trust is not present, I already know that you don't want to be there. Somebody can't be trusted. You're like, oh, I don't need to be dealing with you. Mm -hmm. Right. And and it is personal. Somebody says they're going to do something. They make a commitment to Matt and they Mm -hmm. don't come through. You're like, what is wrong with that person, man? Right. It's a character flaw on their part. Like it's not just, Oh, I forgot, you know, I got busy or whatever. It's like, 
you're a terrible human being. <laughs> yeah, I'll admit that. Like, I know it's hard to admit. Please don't think I'm a bad person. But I, I, I that's that goes through my mind. Like, like I said, they're trying to screw me. Yeah. yeah. And, and that is characteristic of the connector. My wife is a connector. I live with the connector. If I say I'm going to do something, I better show up and do what I said I was going to do, because otherwise she's going to be hurt. She's going to take it personally. It's going to affect our relationship. And I don't want that because I love her. So how do people find out? How do they know that they can count on you? Hmm. How do people know they can count on me? Yeah. How do they experience that? I deliver. I mean, that's, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know of any other way. I, I, I How do you deliver? Tell me what that looks like. Um, I'm one of those types that I will do anything that it takes to get something done. Like, even if it means, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's why, again, as an entrepreneur, it's why 20 or 30 nights a year, I'm up, I'm up after midnight working on something because I, I told one of my team members I'd have it to them by the end of the day and they needed to do their work. And yeah, I, I got behind that day. I had something come up. I had life get in the way. Maybe I forgot. Maybe I truly forgot. But they asked me at 930, hey, did you finish it? And I go, nope, but I've got two and a half hours, so I'll finish it now. And it means I'm not watching TV with my wife, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know which I didn't say I would. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think I leave a lot of flexibility in that. Like, you know, we don't, uh, I think this is one of the things my wife's been really, really good at is, we don't make a whole lot of plans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And part of that may be because she knows that I'm likely to, <laughs> you know, to do stuff like that. Um, I, I will just I will make it happen. How do people experience that you're reliable? How do they experience that I'm reliable? Uh -huh. um, it's one of the things that our clients have really, uh, I'll use clients as an example. They've, they've actually commented on that. Like we just, we get stuff done it just stuff just gets done like if we say we're going to do it we do it and you might not know the backstory like i said i might have been doing it at 11 30 at night when i didn't want to but it just it gets done um with our you know with our kids i mean if soccer practice is at six we need to leave at 5 15 i might be working till 5 15 45 and go into soccer practice freezing half to death if it's cold you know I might be going to soccer practice in jeans and a dress shirt, but I will be it's I we will leave on time to go to soccer practice. Like I am like a and that's like I'm a stickler for like I everybody knows I call like 10 seconds early, you know? I, and if I don't, I apologize. If I call you at like if our calls at four and I call you at like 40 seconds after four, I apologize for calling late. And everybody's like, you're 40 seconds. Like I, I got here two seconds. Yeah, you know, I wasn't even I didn't even know it was I didn't even know what time it was, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's just kind of, I don't know. I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, it's like an ethos. I, I think it, I think it has to do with being an entrepreneur for so long from such a young age was like, when I was really young, I was always scared of losing clients mm -hmm. that I would like, I had to deliver. That's and how I do people know they can count on you? How do they know they can count on me? Yeah. Um, I think at this point it, it's, so let's get out of the business world because I think in the business world it's a little bit easier because we have a reputation now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like when when somebody like Michael Hyatt introduces me to somebody, they they are they just know. Mm -hmm. Like, well, he did a couple million dollar launches for Michael. He can do the same for me. He's going to get mm -hmm. stuff done. Michael would never introduce us. Mm -hmm. um, in the real world, so to speak, in the non business world, um, just comes from. I, mean, I don't know. It just comes from time you know like um, i'm on time for the f the first call that we have um i show up on my daughter's always like the first or second kid to practice you know mm -hmm. um i don't ever and let i i don't think i've ever like you know coaching soccer for example i don't think i've ever missed a practice i don't think i've ever not been like the most prepared person you know like i, I know you know everything <laughs> you know and it's not like micromanaging it's more of just like i know that we're going to bring you know this and this and this in case you know because this kid tends to always forget this kid tends to get migraines in the middle of games and her mom never brings advil so we're going to bring advil you know 
And so I think people, they don't know, they just know that they can rely on that. And the purpose behind all of that is what? Um, so that what? Like, so that yeah. people. Here's the thing. Like, I'll use the soccer thing as an example. Um, I like winning. I, I, I genuinely like winning. And if uh, this one girl who was one of our best players has a headache, uh, it's going to be a lot harder to win. And I want our girls to win. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want, I want, I see what it's like when they win versus when they lose. I mean, they're at that age where it means something now. When you're six, who cares? You get a juice box and some cookies at the end. Um, they're dejected when they lose and they are ecstatic when they win. And I just love seeing that in them. And I like winning. And so, and I got a weird question for you. Yeah. Somebody says, what do you do? What do you tell them real quick? Uh, I always answer sarcastically. What do I do when? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm more than just like, you know, I could just say, well, I'm in market, you know, I own a marketing business. I could, that's the easy way to just diffuse the situation. But, uh, right. but I'm more than that. So I actually, I usually say it depends on, depends on what, you know, when you, when you ask me and what, I, like, what do you mean? I, I sometimes I'll kind of play dumb. Like, what do I do when? So I'm just going to, I'm just going to offer you a little gift here for a second. Yeah. And obviously you have the recording so you can go this back. This is cool, by the way. Like this is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no. Well, I'm about to blow your mind right now. Okay. Right, right now, effective immediately. I'm going to blow Matt McWilliams mind right now. Okay. Okay. So if someone was going to an about us page and there was you, it might sound a little bit like this. I'm Matt McWilliams and I believe in relationships that are based in trust. When we work together, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get things done, to deliver and come through for you. If we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. I'm a stickler for promptness. I'll be on time all the time. And I don't miss what I commit to. I prepare with ferocity. Do the extra so that we can come together, win no matter what. Mm. And if that sounds like somebody you'd like to work with, give me a call. Gosh. Yeah, I got that recording. I will have my assistant transcribe that. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I mean that—that's true. That's true, Ridgely. I mean, it really is. Like it, it's—that's you. It's very interesting because I never thought about that, but it really does. It, it. I think that winning thing is probably the ultimate driver. I so now that. imagine that you take this. So I'm going to quickly convert this into limbic messaging that you can use all over your website. Okay. So it would sound like this. We believe in on time all the time, period. We believe in doing what it takes to win. We believe in ferocious preparation. We believe in never missing what we commit to. We believe in doing whatever it takes. We believe in doing everything we say we're going to do. And now imagine that those statements are all over your website. Hmm. When somebody shows up there and they see, we believe in ferocious preparation, they're going to be like, yeah, that's my man. We believe in doing whatever it takes. Yeah, that's what I want. You're immediately touching them where they live in their limbic space. You're talking to the limbic brain that makes decisions to buy your products, to use your services or not. And what most people do, unfortunately, is they just tell people what they do and what they sell, and nobody cares. Mm. And especially at this time during this pandemic, you yes. have to stand out and you have to talk to the decision-making part of the brain if you want to win. That's what mind types is all about, and that's what limbic messaging is all about. So I know this has like just massive implications for marketing. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Bridget, as we, man, this, whew, this is so good. Um, everything we do is driven by a belief system, is something you said earlier. And uh, so, you have this workshop mm -hmm. coming up. I want to, I want to finish off with this. And this is gonna, because right now I know what's happening. Like everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, like that's amazing!" And there's probably, you know, at least a few people listening going, "That's exactly me too." You know, that like, okay, cool. You probably have already bought something from me. Um, <laughs> you know, you're probably already a client, a coaching client. If you're not, well, now you know what I stand for. Let's work together. 
Uh, but people are out there going like, how do we discover people's mind types? What are the other six, all these things, you know, like I'm the connector. They're not, you know, there's something else they're going, this doesn't resonate with me at all, but it's cool. So I want to learn mine. I want to learn my audiences. Um, tell us a little bit about this workshop coming up and then I'll, I'll tell people how they can get in on it. So the thing is right now during this pandemic, we have to start to think differently in order to survive and more importantly, in order to thrive. Things are never going to be the same again. No. There's this huge opportunity because all these people are at home and therefore they're online, which means there's more noise than ever before, more mm -hmm. stuff bombarded at you than ever. So to really do well today, you have to stand out. You have to express your authentic self to the world so that you attract people who believe what you believe that become great clients and customers. And on this workshop, we're going to talk about exactly how brain biology works to get you to connect with the limbic or decision-making part of the brain scientifically so that you can attract great clients to your business and organically reject the ones that are not a fit which is so important, man, because if you can imagine for a second, Matt, that you had only fantastic clients that were with you, that resonated with you, that were your kind of people and you're their kind of people, suddenly you have an amazing, incredible business as opposed to any old client, including the complainers, the whiners, the moaners, the people that drive you nuts and stress you out and keep you up at night and you want to fire or send to your competition, right? Mm -hmm. So... In the workshop, we're going to talk about exactly how mind types work with limbic messaging or the limbic brain, how you can use that to set up the kind of messaging like you and I just did here for your own business and really stand out from everybody else and attract the right people in the process. Hmm. So guys, if you want to be freaked out like I am right now, um, definitely get on this workshop. Uh, just go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash mind types mcwilliams.com forward slash mind types and um uh, and get in on this training and so uh yeah i mean guys you're you're gonna learn your own of course but you're gonna learn also how to discover other people's which as originally said will give you like these ninja powers uh when you're marketing so um originally wow you freaked me out like i said so thank you for that. That was that was really cool. Uh, this has been powerful. This is one of those episodes. I'm going to go back and, you know, like you suggested, I'm going to go back and listen to it. I'm probably going to have uh, my wife and uh, you know a couple team members go in and listen to this as well, so we can work on some stuff from the marketing angle. But man, thank you, uh, thank you for what you did for me today. Uh, thank you for sharing this with everyone. And uh, guys, go get in on this uh, in this workshop. I mean, uh, yeah. Any, anything you want to finish with, Ridgely? I don't even know what to say right now. I'm like so like blown away. <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to say this. I mean, we're in a crazy time, and we can emerge from, the, uh, from this stronger and better. Here's the funny thing. Winter always turns into spring. There's never been an occasion when winter turned into autumn, right? It just never goes backwards. And we are going to get out of this winter. At that point, there will be two types of people those who spent some time preparing for the spring and those who waited and suddenly are at ground zero. Mm. Right now is the perfect time to prepare to get out of this winter and step into spring. The way you do that is by doing things differently than everybody else, by standing out and by taking advantage of situations like this, like uh, listening to people like Matt who say, wait a second, man, you got to learn this stuff. You got to find out more. So please do yourself the favor for you, your business, your future. The world needs you. Show up to the workshop and learn how you can express you to the world. Couldn't have said it better myself originally. Thanks a bunch, buddy. <laughs> All right, me. brother. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So like I said, that was crazy. <laughs> Ridgely nailed it. And just knowing this is a game changer for me. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to know your mind type, and I highly recommend you find out, go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash mind types, take Ridgely's quiz. And then after the quiz, make sure you take advantage of the opportunity to check out the free training from Ridgely to show you how to use your mind type to express your authentic self and make more sales and grow your business. 
Again, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash mind types. Go check that out. And I'll see you in the next episode when I'm going to share my top three lessons from our best affiliate promotion ever. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguide.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguide.com. Who knows, might end up being featured on this podcast.